I found the perfect home for me on the Outer Banks, but I need rental income and it's not in a rental program. What do I do? Hey everyone, it's Danielle Taylor with Keller Williams Realty here on the beautiful Outer Banks. And this is a really great question and one that I often get. And so I thought I would give you my five things to think about when the home that you fall in love with is not currently in a rental program. So the first thing is we need to get a really good handle on how much rental income you can expect. Okay. And there are a few ways that we can do this, which is great. The first way is to go to trusted property management partners and have them work up what we call a projection. This is where they do it kind of similar to how we would do a CMA or comparable market analysis for properties. Basically what they do is take that home and look at similar properties that aren't a rental program and come up with a projected number, what they think you could get for the home. They're going to factor in things like um, the condition of the home, how much you keep your rental calendar open, um, and they're gonna give you that number. So we'll be able to have a baseline number of what the trusted professional in property management thinks that the home can do. They will also give us suggestions on maybe some things that we can do to improve the rental income. And so that'll come into to play later. Then we wanna do our own homework. First off, we want to get more than one projection and we want to compare those. We want to look at the differences and understand why so that we have a more comfortable number or a comfort level with the number we're given. Then we also want to do our own litmus test and see if this number seems to jive with other properties that we know are on the market and what their income is. Okay, so that's number one. First of all, we're going to figure out how much we think the property can drive. The second thing we're gonna do, we're gonna look at, okay, where can we make small changes that are reasonable that could really impact our rentability and the amount we can charge? Cosmetic things, it could be simple things like paint, bedding, some new furnishings. Could we add an amenity that's not super expensive? Maybe adding a hot tub would extend your shoulder season, spring and fall. Um, are there simple things like the bed configuration? You know, one of the property management companies tells me all the time, people want king beds. So are there any rooms that don't currently have king beds that you can go ahead and put a king bed in, okay? So that's number two. Number three, gotta decide who you're gonna work with. And you really have three different options. You can go the traditional property management route. There's lots of fabulous traditional property management companies on the Outer Banks. They will basically take it all off your plate, handle everything for you. One thing to remember, if you're going to go the traditional property management route, please make sure that you fully read and understand your contract. Make sure you're looking for clauses that might affect usability, so when you can use it. What are the cancellation terms should you ever want to cancel that property management contract? Is it an auto renew contract? That's really, really important to understand if it's auto renew and when that happens in case you ever want to make a change in the future or in case you sell your home. So that's um, something to think about with traditional property management. You can also go the hybrid model, which is basically some form of using super hosts where they use the VRBO or Airbnb platform, but still perform a lot of the duties for you that a traditional property management company would do. And then finally, obviously you can go self-manage where you do the whole thing yourself. So the third thing you needed to do was figure out who's going to do the work for you, or are you gonna do the work for you? The fourth thing is really taking all of this information we've gathered so far and understanding your bottom line really making sure that with a conservative rental number and accurate estimates for expenses that you are comfortable with that bottom line. That's the most important thing. There's nothing worse than being right on that line and it taking all the fun out of owning a beach house. So you really need to dial that in and get comfortable with that bottom line. All right, so last but not least, we need to talk about the fifth thing, which is timing. So timing 
really what I'm saying is it's in regards to timing when you buy. So from the point that you buy to when you think you'll be ready and able to start collecting rental income, how much is that time? Be prepared for that and plan for it. If you buy in the fall, it's great because you can make those updates and still be ready to capture the whole season. If you buy in the spring, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get the word out there and start to gather those rents. So just think about that. The second thing with regards to timing sort of talks about the long term. It does take time to build a following, to build a clientele for your beach house. So just be patient. It takes time to get reviews. Reviews are what helps people feel comfortable booking your home. So please go into it with the understanding that this may take a couple of years to really ramp up and don't give up too soon. Please don't give up too soon. So ultimately, those are my five things to think about. Just because a home isn't in a rental program doesn't mean it can't be an awesome rental asset for you. So as always, make sure you subscribe, make sure you reach out if you have questions, and we hope you have a great day.